Welcome to the first Mark Echo Monday. I'm really excited. Uh, today we'll be talking about Facebook Pixel. So if you go to a group, Facebook Pixel events versus parameters, that's the topic that one. So we'll be what we'll be covering today is basically explaining the difference between both. When do you use events? How do you use parameters with events? What's the difference and how does one complement the other? And so the first thing I'm going to talk about is is basically events. What are events and how do you use them for? So think of events as steps or stages within your funnel, right? So you wanna track where did people stay or leave within your funnel, whether it's an e-commerce site, whether you wanna have people download a, an ebook, um, you, want, you want them to make an online purchase, anything that relates to the funnel to the customer journey right so if you think of an e-commerce site and i'm going to simplify this but you basically have four main basic steps you have your home page people are going to browse through products so they're going to land through uh, like they're going to look at different products within your site they're going to add those to your checkout to their to their card right so that they can go to a checkout page where they'll add a, a payment info billing address and then you basically have a confirmation page where they'll say, well, this is your shipment. This is when it's going to ship. Um, this is the stuff that you bought. Um, and these are the basic four steps that you want people or users to take. And so what you want to be able to do is track those steps and see where people left off. Because some people might look at a, at a product page but not go to the checkout or not go to the, to the confirmation page. And these is, this is where events come handy. Because what events will do is they're going to help you track those different steps, right? So we're going to say, well, I want people to, I want to see what people looked at specific products. And this is where events are going to come handy because like I have an event that's called view content. So I can say, well, let's see what people view specific content. Or I could say, well, how many people trigger the add to cart? right? So how many people actually added products to their carts? Um, I can also have a confirmation page, right? So I could have confirmation or a checkout event. Um, and I can also have a purchase event. So how many people actually purchased different products? And so what events will do is they're going to help me track all the different stages within your funnels, right? So within your within your customer journey or the steps that the users are supposed to take. Um, same thing if you think of a, of a landing page with an ebook, right? So why do I generate content? Well, I have a blog. So I have a blog post, right, that I want people to read because I want them to go to a landing page so that they register and then go to a confirmation or a thank you page so that they download the study guide. So same thing, instead of a purchase, what I'm gonna do is say, well, I have view content because I want people, I wanna track what content people actually saw. Uh, I can have a landing page where I could say, well, this could be a lead, for example. So a potential lead, people who landed on our landing page. And this could also be a confirmation purchase or um, yeah, or lead as well. Um, so this way I know and I can track where did people left off within my funnel, right? Did they stay at the view content? Did they stay at landing page or a thank you page? Why do you want events? Because these are gonna allow you to do two things. One is they're gonna allow you to do audiences. So I can say, well, find everyone that stayed within the purchase stage. Find everyone that stayed within the lead stage, right? And two is measurement, so tracking. So I'm gonna be able to launch campaigns for conversions for specific steps, but also I can track how much revenue I'm generating or how many leads or results I'm generating from that, from my marketing campaigns. Um, so think of events, right? And this is all the events that Facebook has as a way to measure your funnel. Um, where did people left off? So if I wanna track an e-commerce site, I would say basically view content, I will use initiate checkout, um, add to cart, and a purchase event, right? Because these are going to allow me to track and see where did people stay within my funnel? Where did people left off? Uh, how do I build audiences in order to track that better? Um, 
launch better campaigns and also do better audiences. So what are parameters for and how do I use them? Because this is a bit different, right? So we've talked about what events allow you is basically track where people stay within your stage. So what are parameters used for? And so what parameters help you with is they're gonna allow you to track better and have more information on events, right? So think of parameters as categories or additional info on your events. Because here's the thing, if you're an e-commerce site, right, and you have, well, again, you have your four basic steps. So you're gonna have your home page, you're gonna have your product page, your checkout page, and your confirmation page. With an e-commerce site, this is pretty straightforward, right? The problem is that what happens when you have plus 25 products? How do you know where the people land? Um, what product did they see? Uh, was it product A or product B? Same thing, like how do you know what people bought? Like what product did they bought? How much money did they spend? And what currency did they buy? Um, and so this is where parameters come, come into place because what you're gonna have is, again, you're gonna have your events. So, and I'm gonna simplify this again, but we're gonna have your view content. So we wanna see what products people saw with the view content event. You're gonna have an add to cart, right? So if people, when people add to their carts products, we're gonna, we're gonna trigger that event. You're gonna have a confirmation or a checkout event at your checkout page. And you're gonna have a purchase event at your confirmation page. So how do you parameters come into play here, right? And so what parameters will do is they're gonna allow me to and have additional information on all of these events that we're building. So I'm gonna give you an example. Um, let's say we have view content, right? So what information do I need or it's helpful if I wanna do remarketing, right? So if people go to a product page, what I wanna know is one is product name, for example, or product category. Why? Because if people saw a specific product, what I wanna do is remarket to them similar products. Um, I also wanna know, for example, source. Where are people coming from? And you could do this with a parameter, like are people coming from organic traffic? Are they coming from Facebook ads? Where are people coming from, right? Same thing if we wanna do purchase, right? So we have checkout, we have, let's go straight to purchase. What information will be helpful for me to track, measure um, my ads? So again, I wanna know what people bought. So it could be product name. It could be an SKU. So depending on how I categorize all of my products online. But I also wanna know amount. How much did people spend? Did they spend a hundred, a thousand dollars? What currency did they use? Did they pay in dollars? Did they pay in euros? Um, what is, what's the, all the information that can help me better track and measure my campaigns? So think of parameters as categories or additional information that you could use in order to better define your events, right? So let's look at other examples right here. So if you look at this, what you'll see is that you have a view content event. So what, what this is doing is saying, well, we're going to track all events or all people that that go to this specific website, we're going to name them as view content as the event. But I'm going to have further parameters. to categorize that event, right? So what this is saying is, well, we're gonna have a content name, category, ID, type, value, and currency. So what this is doing is, all of these parameters are describing this event. Um, so what this is saying is, well, you have really fast running shoes, category, apparel, accessories, shoes, um, content IDs, type, value, currency. 
Same thing with this ones, right? So you have your your pixel event, which is view content, right? So what I'm gonna do here is view content. And what I'm gonna have underneath are all the different parameters that describe this event, right? So what this is saying is I have a category called entertainment. I have a name, Avengers trailer. I have a currency, I have a value, I have a referral, right? Where is it coming from? User agent, language. So these are all parameters you can automate. Same thing with complete registration. We talked about this, right? I want to know what did people purchase um, or if they register for specific things, like how much value do I put on that lead? What currency is it? Um, and also you can customize events and, and, and parameters. So you could say like the ones that Facebook give me, so all of these purchase, generate lead, complete registration, etc. Don't help me, so I want to do customized events. I could do that as well. And I could customize my parameters, right? So this can be anything. Like it doesn't have to be content name. If you have an SKU, you can use SKU as your parameter. Um, so what parameters will do is basically allow you to categorize those events to better track and have more information on the things that you're tracking. So again, think of events as stages or steps, right? And think of parameters as additional info categories or ways to describe your events. Why? Because again, if you have an e-commerce site and you have multiple products, that you're tracking, they all go straight to a checkout page. You want to be able to see, was it product A? Was it product B? Was it product C? You want to be able to see what currency it is. You want to see the amount. Did they spend $1,000 or was it $100? Um, and so, again, think of events as stages within your funnel and think of parameters as descriptions. So additional categories, additional information that's gonna allow you to describe um, those events. Again, so what steps to take and what should you do next? One is make sure you um, diagram or like you draw your, your process. So do the same thing write your different categories and events or information that you think it's important for you to track and then figure out whether can i track it through an event or can i track it through a parameter um hopefully this gives you a good overview of the difference between events and parameters um, i'm not going to go into this in this tutorial with how do you implement and actually install the pixel but this should allow you and give you a brief overview of what's the difference between events and parameters and when do you use both um, so again, hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Make sure you follow us on Facebook. Make, make sure you follow us as well on our YouTube channel, um, share our content and be sure to vote for next week's Marqueca Monday. Uh, every Monday we're going to be launching, um, new video tutorials. You get to vote. Um, so make sure you're in our Facebook group vote for it. Uh, let me know what other topics or things you think might be helpful. And again, join our group, vote, and hopefully I'll see you next week.